happy. Hi, Evelyn. Oh, this is this is also my first YouTube live, and now I'm going live on Instagram. Okay. All right, so we are just getting started. And Evelyn, I feel like you're going to know all this stuff already because you're already in the programs. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Hey, Keisha. Hi, y'all. So let's get <laughs> let's get started. If you are um, currently joining me on Instagram, hello. If you're currently joining me on YouTube, I can see your comments as well. Um, this is my first YouTube um, live, but... Um, not my first Instagram live. It's not like the same. It's not different. I don't know why I'm making it such a big deal. It's anyway. But hey, y'all. So happy that y'all could join me today. Hey, Rachel. So I really want to jump into this content because I have some things planned. And as we go through it, if you have any questions at all, feel free to just put them down inside the comment box wherever you are. And I'm going to be sure to put them in there. I mean, to answer them. And so we're, so we're going to be talking about the three mistakes that you're probably making with content. And we're going to talk about how to fix it. And um, I thought about this because I spent so much time talking about like, you know, adding value. And I'm not the only person. Like, I feel like that's like the industry keyword, like, you know, adding value. But like, no one really knows what that means. No one really knows like, you know, how to really do it. We just kind of give you like bits and pieces, but we don't really tell you like, okay, don't do that. Don't do that. Do more of this, right? <laughs> and so hopefully I'm going to help y'all kind of put that inside, um, put that more into perspective, kind of put you on the right track of your content creation strategy. And so let's start out with the first one. And the first one is not tying any of your content towards like what you offer. And so I'm such a big fan of that because I believe, hey, hey, Stephanie. And so I believe in creating content in a way that is like, you know, you can use it many ways. And so I am so against creating content just because you see someone else creating the same thing. Like just because, um, just because someone else has like some kind of like, I don't know, some kind of branding template, you don't have to have the same thing. And so, um, especially if it's something that you don't really want to add to your service, like kind of on um, bank. And so I, I believe that we should all have content that is tied towards some kind of content. So whether or not like you do, um, I mean, towards some kind of service. And so whether or not you do, um, hair or you provide like, like photography services or you do makeup, anything like that, that service should tie towards that. And so the point of content is really to put them in a funnel. Like um, the reason why I believe that content should be used for like many things is because at the end, at the end of the day, it should be used so that you, you can take someone from point A to point B. And if you don't have to, and if, and if you don't have a point B, and you're just spending a lot of time and they're kind of like watching your stuff or reading your stuff and like, okay, how can you help me? I don't really understand. Like, do you even offer this service? And you're probably sitting there like, well, I'll take anything. And we don't want them to feel like you're just going to make up a package or make up a service just to get their money. That's not how you build a community. And I want this year to be a year of content and community. And so, uh, <laughs> and so that is the, um, that's the first one. So the third, I mean, the second um, point that I want to make is I want you to be so, so like specific in your content to where you are creating content because it's what your people want, not like what you want. Like I spent so much time. That was one, one mistake that I made all the time. Like I thought that I was so cool. When I launched Jadix Media, I thought, I was like, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make these YouTube videos. I'm going to have all this stuff. And um, it didn't it didn't really, like, uh, make sense because, I one, I didn't have a service for some of the things that I was, um, set, was, um, was, was teaching, like, well, then. Now I do. But, like, you know, like, uh, I was um, doing videos, very high, produ very high production videos that were telling people how to, like, you know, um, get to their first 100 email subscribers or get to their first, um, like how to do like lead magnets and stuff. And I didn't really have a, um, package for that. Like about, I think that, I think that was like three years ago. I didn't have a package for that yet. Like, why was I spending so much time on that? Like now I do. And that's the kind of content that I should have been making now and not before back, like about three years ago, I was doing more so social media management. So maybe I should have been doing a lot more helping people get 
to that stage of their um, journey to where I can kind of just kind of take them and help them along. So like maybe things like um, like social media templates or um, maybe like guides that help them, maybe guys, guys to help them like write captions better. Like that kind of, that should have been content that I would have was, was making, but I was making content that I thought would immediate make, like make me into an industry expert. And that's another thing um, that we want to kind of be aware of is like, I believe that in order for us to make sales on social media, we have got to be um, an expert in our field or we have to be a perceived expert in our field. But um, expert can be different things. Like just because someone else is an expert in something doesn't mean that you have to be the same. And so um, I was doing things where I was like, well, I have to do like these types of videos because everyone that I like look up to are I, are, are making these, these same videos, but I wasn't really there yet. And I don't want you to just make videos just because you think that it's like, it checks a checkbox in like your career that you have to do that right now. You don't. I want you to ask your audience. I want you to be in tune with your idol customer. And I want you to ask them what, what kind of things that they want to learn about. What is their biggest struggle in whatever that you can solve them with? If you're a photographer, what is their biggest struggle in like in, in getting like brand photos, like things like that. I want, I really want you guys to be a little bit more intentional about that. Cause I know I am, especially this year. <laughs> um, and so, uh, I think, so another point that I wanted to make was when I was doing that, I was working twice as hard and not making anything because I didn't, I didn't have one, I didn't have a service to help that. And I was just, I, I didn't have any way to collect anyone's email. I didn't have any way to put them in a funnel. It was just, I was just make, making content and just thinking that people were going to like show up. And I don't know why I have that fan on right now. <laughs> it's fine. And um, so... I want you to try to make content that answers those questions of people and what they're struggling with, with right now. And um, I mentioned this inside my webinar a few days ago. And so um, some things that I do is like, I not only like poll the audience and when I mean polling, not like you don't have to send them a survey monkey asking them like 10 billion questions. Just ask them like just the one question, the magic question, what is your biggest struggle with blank? And that is um, going to be that's going to help you so much. Or think about um, whenever you have discovery calls, or when you meet with clients one on one, what are those main questions that people are asking? And then I want you to write those down and then make content from them. Like, how can you position? How can you take these people that barely know you and, and position them to being your idol client? That's what content does. The content is used to position them or transform them into your idol client or to qualify them as such. And so I want you to think about that a little bit more. So think a little bit more meta, think a little bit more, um, don't think high level about your content, think more meta. So think more about like, what is this particular problem that, that they're having and how can I use content to help them feel like I'm giving them a really quick win a really like I'm really solving their problems or like thinking that I could solve their problems, a, a bigger problem later on down the road. I hope that makes sense. Like y'all give me some hearts or something if that makes sense. Um on 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 YouTube, y'all let me know if this makes sense. Oh, my mom is on the live, y'all. Say hello to my mama. Wednesday was her birthday. And so the third thing that I really really want to touch base on is we think that our audience is going to get tired of us repeating the same thing over and over and over. And that's why most people don't even know, um, like, so whenever I talk to them, they're like, well, Jamar, like, what do I talk about? I've already done things that I have to do. And I'm like, say it again, say it again, <laughs> do it more, um, say it in different ways. Um, and it's very, very easy to do that. Um, there's this thing called the, um, the rule of seven, meaning that you have to have, um, Typically, it takes like seven touch points for you to like make a sale. And that's like kind of um, how advertising works. That that's why you have to see something more than once to kind of like be sold on it. And that's how even online marketing works. People have to see things more than once. They have to see it in different ways. And that even helps them kind of know a little bit more about you if they see more of a human um, side to you and an expert side to you. It's not just, it isn't just like, I know this thing. It's it's I know this thing, and I'm also someone that you really can trust, and that so, and, and someone that that you would really enjoy working with because I'm not like everyone else. I am specifically um, 
for you. Like I am your ideal contractor or freelancer or, or partner and you are my ideal client. And we are going to make amazing things together. And that's kind of how content, that's kind of like how content makes people think. Like you want people to, like you want people to, to watch your content, listen to your content, read your content, and you want them to be able to think, I need to send him a DM or I need to talk to her real quick. Like I need to work with her or him right now. I know that they, that, that they can help me. And, um, also let's see what else. Um, I feel like I'm like running through all this y'all, but I don't want to waste anyone's time. Uh, let's see, what else do I have to say? So I feel like I had, I know I said, I know I said three things, but I feel like I have like five things I really want, want to talk about. <laughs> so, um, I think, has anyone heard of like the spray and pray? Like, I feel like we do that a lot to where we, um, think about our content as like, okay, I did this, I did that. Oh shoot. Now, now I should post it. And, uh, that's called, that's what I call it. Like spray and pray. Like you're just like, you're just posting randomly throughout like the month. And then like, and then you complain when, nothing happens and because you're not really being consistent and this is another um thing that we kind of um get get confused about is is consistency and i'm not saying that you have to post every day in order to be consistent it means you just have to show up whenever you can show up and like you're making an effort of showing up so maybe you can't do once a day maybe you can do um three times a week of really really good valuable content that really speaks to your idol customer they'll love it. Maybe you just can do Instagram stories if you're um, trying to use Instagram for that. Um, and so just don't feel like you have to post three, three times a day or post every day if you can't keep up. Being consistent really just means showing up on a consistent basis that, that makes sense for you. So of course, like you shouldn't be posting once a month. That isn't going to help you. That, that, that isn't going to help you, especially if you're a service-based business where, um, if like, what is that saying? We're um, out of sight, out of mind. Um, for service-based businesses, like if you're not showing up, people forget about you. Like you don't know, like they don't think about you all the time, right? And so you have to be able to show up con con uh, consistently with really good content, not just like a picture of your work, not just a client testimonial all the time, but something that really makes them remember you, makes them like really speak to their heart. And so I went through those like three or four things. I think it's four things about how to like what mistakes we're making, like, you know, not tying content to offering. So um, my example for that was I was doing I was doing email um, content like three years ago and I didn't have an email product to give to people like and um, and, and versus. Uh, me doing like social media, like specific things because I was managing social media accounts for um for for people. I should be doing content that would assist me to get that so that way, and um making content that you want to make, not content people want. So rethink how you're making content now. Is it is it, are you just so think about are you just making content because it makes you feel good, or are you making content because it helps your actual customer? If the answer is that, that you're making content because it just makes you feel good, it makes you feel cool, stop it. Look at your idle customer, figure out what they like, like figure out what they need to know from you and how you can help them and go from there. Oh, and um the third mistake is you think your audience will get tired of hearing the same thing over and over. That is not true. Get that out of your head. They need to hear it more than once. The same way how, you know, you don't always do this. Like, I'm sure you don't always do um, things that you're told the first time. <laughs> I know I don't. I think I don't I don't ever take anything that, that I see on the Internet seriously the, um, the first time that I see it. And so you have like you really have to sell these things to people. You have to really position yourself as the expert. You have to um, show people that you know what you're talking about. And the fourth um, like bonus mistake that I want to give you guys is that um, don't is that we spray and pray. We just randomly post and we just do things that are just like very haphazard, like where we just post and we're, like we don't have a plan for anything. We just post it and, and just go. And so I want to give you two. It's okay, Akita. There'll be a replay, girl. <laughs> you always show up for me anyway. It's okay for you to be a little bit late. But so 
the um the two ways that i encourage you all to fix that is have a plan i want you to uh, have a strategy with what you want to post that sounds when i say strategy that sounds like so overwhelming and so big but it really isn't i just want you to list out the things that that you want to post or the content ideas that that you want to talk about for the week for the month for um for the quarter whatever makes you the most comfortable how like whatever kind of person you are do that i don't want you to feel overwhelmed but i just want you to have some kind of structure so that you're not just posting random stuff because you think that you need to show up for people or they're going to like or they're going to forget about you (laughs) and so so think of like your content touch points and map out those things that your idle customer will want to know and a, a content touch point is just, you know, how you are going to be communicating to them. Is it going to be through email marketing, um, YouTube um, content, your podcast, um, social media posts, like, and then just map out what you want to say in those. And so um, I think last um, last week I talked about that inside the webinar where we have um, have content ideas and then you put it into a actual content calendar. So you have this bank of ideas that you just, just have stored because you have been looking at your... Um, at your audience and you've been um, taking all the questions in and, and now you need to kind of um, be a little bit more specific and use that content and make something that um, you can actually put out into the world. And so I actually, let me see, Stephanie says, what would be the minimum times a week? I say if I would look at, so I would look at your schedule and see what you can do. Maybe try at least maybe um, if you are really busy and you just do not think that you can post at all, girl. Maybe um, two, maybe two to three times a week, but then do do like a few stories in in between of that, and that's like bare minimum. Maybe that will be bare 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 minimum for you. I think that's doable by anybody. I think that will be very very helpful. Um, Patty on YouTube. Hey, Patty. She says, I used to plan out my Instagram so carefully and made it beautiful, but I got less and less reach and the community has changed so much over the last 12 to 18 months. I kind of have given up on it. Oh, no, 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 no. Patty, what I would do for you is not focus on making your content beautiful, but focus on look at your Instagram and like um look at your Instagram analytics. I, I think you have a business um account on, on Instagram. Look at your analytics and then look and then see what kind of content is po- is performing the highest and then make more of that. So um so don't focus so much up on the aesthetics, but focus up on the you have a business and person. Okay, so look at your business page and then look at the the insights and see what kind of content and then um see what kind of content is performing the like the best as far as engagement and then make more of that and then test it out for like seven to like seven to ten days and see if if anything changes from from there all right and so let's see um so the first thing is planning and then the second um fix i have for you all is to engage more like i know i said um so you know how we just spray and pray but we um we don't we also post and ghost we post and ghost so much i know i was guilty of that um back in the day i just thought hey it's um i just like post this this thing and like i'll like a few things before and call it a day but that's not how social like that's not how social media works right um if you're posting i want you to try to be be there engaging with your post after maybe like like 30 minutes of it. Uh, and so no more posting and ghosting. Um, we always talk about how the algorithm is out to get us and and how no one's seeing our post, but we're not really contributing to the conversation at all. And so we can't really always blame Instagram or YouTube, can we? We have to put... Um, some effort into our own marketing. We can't just just rely on Instagram to carry us along the way. And so, uh, think about this. So we don't ever. I was hearing this on on a podcast the other day where, um, people love Spotify, right? People love Spotify's curated. People love um Spotify's curated um. Uh, what is it? Their 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 playlist. But when it comes to Instagram they don't do like they it's it's basically what i'm saying is that it's it's the same thing spotify has an algorithm instagram has an algorithm they 
you tell Spotify what you like, what you don't like, what you like to listen to, and 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 you do that. But we don't we don't give Instagram the same type of information. And when I heard that, I was like, oh my gosh, I had no idea about that. And so what I would um, suggest is for you to treat Instagram as if it is a social media platform because it really is. So make sure that you are engaging in your own communities out there and that you are um, really putting your best foot foot forward on your own content and other people's content. So make sure that you are totally engaging throughout the entire time. And so let me know if this was helpful for you guys. Uh Uh-oh. Am I buffering over in chat disconnected? Your buffering, is it okay to schedule? Yes, it is okay to schedule posts. So Evelyn asked if it's okay to schedule posts. It is totally fine to do that. There's no problem with that at all. I think that, um, I really think that this scheduling is fine. I just want you to have like, you know, if, if you have time, time to schedule, that's perfect. That is, per- I actually recommend scheduling. Like I use the later app to schedule my Instagram post. Um, and, um, actually if you want to, um, if you want to, Sign up for later. Go to jamardiggs.com slash later and you'll get an extra 10, um, 10 posts a month on top of the 30 that that you get um, if you sign up. Later is a free app for um, for you if you want to post on. Um, it, they give you 30 free posts a month and that's more than enough for you to schedule your, your, your Instagram content. And if you use my link, then you'll um, get an, an extra 10, um, 10, um, 10 posts, which is 40 posts a month. But... But yeah, uh, I hope that was helpful. Um, Evelyn, I see that you came over to here. It's okay for you to schedule a post. Um, and so will, will later be give better an- analytics? Uh, I think they, I think that the, the, the analytics are okay. I, um, I wouldn't get later because they have better analytics. I, I have later and I look at my Instagram analytics really, um, like I do like how they um show your your um Instagram post engagement and I really do like like that but um I use later because of how I can look at my um feed I can move pictures around of how I want it um I really do like their um, media library where I, where I can just put photos in there and then just use the photos as I go instead of like going to Google Drive all the time and then uploading and then downloading a photo then uploading it somewhere else and then scheduling it it out i can just have all of my um my branded content my photography inside of later and then um whenever i'm ready to schedule out my posts i can just move drag and drop them into the slots and call it a day so later is really really cool for that i really like it again if if you guys want to try it out later it's totally free so just go to jamardiggs.com slash later and um go ahead and try it out and give it a um give it a little whirl um so yeah you guys if you um are there any other questions that thank you keisha so good to see y'all coming up in here um i also want to tell you guys so i'm not gonna so i'm not gonna just leave y'all hanging um with 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 all this stuff like I told you guys how I use an editorial calendar and um I want to give that calendar to you guys um for free I use Trello for my editorial calendar I want to give you guys my actual template um and so all you have to do is click the link in my bio and sign up to receive that um that that template into your email you'll get the link and you and all you have to do is just sign up and then it'll send you an email Press the link inside the email and you will get that um, that whole template inside Trello that, that, you, that you can copy to your own Trello board and use it. I have a video that instructs you exactly how to use it. And I also have steps for each way that I use it for my own uh, content planning. So I want you guys to be a little bit more intentional with, with your um, content planning this year. And I really hope this template is going to help you all. So go ahead and press the link in my bio and... Um, and download that editorial calendar um, template up from, from Trello. If you have any questions about it, feel free to, re- to reach out to me. Send me a little DM or send me an email. I'm always available for you guys. I Yeah, I hope that this was really helpful. I really plan, plan this out because I really wanted to get this out into the world because I was just seeing it happening for too long, and I really, really want, wanted you guys to, um, you know, get the help that you needed. So... Yeah, if there aren't any more questions, 
I'm going to go ahead and log off. You guys go ahead and click the link in my bio for that template and you can go ahead and download it. When am I going live again? I have no idea, uh, but you will be sure to get an, an Instagram post about it whenever I do go live or um, an email about it whenever I do. Uh, I do a lot of other things besides going live. I have um, live workshops on the internet where you guys can... Um, can listen to some gems dropping at any time, like whenever you are. I have some replays that I can send send you all. But uh, yeah, so I'll be going live. I don't really know. I'm always going live in some kind of, of capacity. Let's just say that. But <laughs> um, if y'all don't have any other questions, uh, have a great night. I'm going to go eat now. <laughs> Good night, y'all.